Hey everyone, Alex here at the Code Wolf again. Today, we're going to explore the new support for ahead of time compilation or AOT for ASP.NET Core and .NET 8. This is also my first video since hitting 1000 subscribers, so I want to say thank you so much for all the support. AOT is an important topic that has big implications for the future of .NET, so it's definitely worth taking the time to at least understand the basics. So just a few really quick slides to help visualize this topic. I promise they'll be quick, just stick with me here. So in this video, our goal is to just answer three simple questions, which are what is AOT? Why should I care about AOT? And how do I start using it today? So in the context of .NET, ahead of time compilation refers to the process of publishing a self-contained app that is pre-compiled to native machine code. Well, what does this really mean? And how is this different than the current processes available? So traditionally with .NET, the publishing and execution process for an app looks something like this. First, we build the source code of our project, which compiles the app to IL code or intermediate language, essentially the DLLs of your project. Then when our app runs, the .NET runtime converts the IL code into native code using just-in-time or JIT compilation, which is then executed by the hardware. The JIT compilation process can provide various benefits, such as improved portability or optimizations for your apps across different environments, runtime safety, and plenty of other features we won't get into here. Although this setup works well, there are some scenarios where this isn't necessarily the ideal or optimal setup, and that's where AOT comes in. When we use AOT, our app is pre-compiled all the way down to native code and can execute directly without the .NET runtime at all. There is no IL code, there is no JIT compiler, there's just an executable of machine code that can run on whatever platform you specified during compilation. There are a few benefits to using native AOT in certain scenarios. Apps are published as a single executable with a much smaller file size than the traditional compilation process. They do not include the overhead assets required for traditional .NET execution. AOT apps also start up much faster due to that removal of the intermediate runtime and JIT compilation. Finally, in some scenarios, AOT apps can have reduced memory footprints. Now, you may have noticed that all of these benefits are essentially performance improvements that apply in certain scenarios. One of the most compelling use cases for AOT compilation is apps that require constant startups and scaling across many instances, such as in certain container orchestrated scenarios where the size of the files also matters. Again, at this time, AOT is not something you can or should just blindly apply to all of your apps, but it's important to understand what it has to offer as it starts to become a bigger part of .NET. Let's see how this works in practice. So to get started, you'll need to download the preview version of .NET from .net.microsoft.com slash next. I'm using preview four for this video, but you'll probably be okay with whatever is latest, or you can download the specific version if you want to make sure you can follow along without issues. I'll also be using VS Code for this demo since I like that it doesn't hide anything behind UI magic. However, Visual Studio 2022 Preview also includes some new templates that support native AOT, so feel free to install that and use it if you'd prefer. If you do use Visual Studio, make sure to install the C++ for Windows Desktop Development Workload from the Visual Studio installer in order to make sure that the AOT templates are available. To create a project that's configured for AOT via the .NET CLI, just open up a command prompt in an empty folder and run the command .NET new API dash dash AOT. .NET will create that project for us. And then we can CD down into that folder and use the code period command to open that up in VS Code. Just give that a moment to finish. Once our project loads, we're actually all set to publish this using AOT right out of the box. But first, let's explore what is actually different about this new project to make all this happen. Most of the changes are in the program.cs file. First, notice that this project uses the create slim builder method instead of the usual create builder. This configures our app to use the minimal defaults and is designed to work with AOT. Next, we have a couple of traditional minimal API endpoints to retrieve a list of to-dos or a specific to-do by ID. Nothing new here, actually. However, you might notice at the bottom we have this JSON serializer snippet for the type of to-do. 
This ensures that our endpoints can convert and return the to-do type as JSON. This extra code is required due to some limitations with reflection in AOT that we won't get into in this video. We also register that on our serialization options further up to make sure the app uses it when serializing the to-do type response data. If this serializer and reflection part is a bit confusing at the moment, don't worry at all. It's not important for understanding the basics of AOT and the rest of this video. Just know that currently with AOT, we have some compatibility issues with some of the features and libraries we take for granted with the normal .NET publishing process, but this should improve over time. Now for the last point of interest, let's head over to the csproj file. Here we have this new publish AOT property set to true. This will enable our project to be compiled down to native code during the publishing process. It's worth noting that while we're actively coding and developing, our project will still compile standard DLLs and run using the .NET runtime like usual. So in our terminal, if I were to say .NET build, you can see the output here is the same as usual. You can also browse over in our explorer into the bin debug folder and see that everything here is pretty much business as usual so far. That also applies to .NET run. So back in the terminal, let's also run that command. And after that starts up, let's launch out to the browser. There we can navigate to our slash to do's endpoint. And sure enough, there's our response data. In many ways, this is still just a standard API project, even if it is a new template in .NET 8 designed around AOT. Now let's stop our app. And next, let's publish a release build using AOT compilation. Remember, you generally only use AOT when packaging your app for a real release deployment. So let's run the command .NET publish c for configuration and specify release. This will trigger the AOT compilation process due to that property in the csproj file. In the console output here, we can actually see where it says it's generating native code. This process does take longer than the standard packaging process since extra work is being done, so just give that a minute to finish. Now after that completes, let's compare the output of this process to our standard debug build. When we navigate all the way down into this new native folder, sure enough, there we can see a self-contained exe file. Windows X64 was chosen as the default target, but you can adjust that with parameters. Notice how much simpler the folder assets are with this approach versus our debug build, since AOT apps are designed to be portable and run without the .NET runtime. Everything this file needs is included right in the executable in native code. It's important to note that this is also different from the portable, self-contained publish approach we've had for .NET apps for some time, which bundle the entire runtime with them, but we'll revisit that in a moment. From here, we can also right-click and say open in integrated terminal, and this will open another terminal that's already set to that directory. Then we can run the executable directly, and sure enough, it starts right up for us extremely quickly, I might add. That's one of the benefits of AOT. If you'd like, you can also go out and verify that it's working again by hitting those to-do endpoints. Now, let's revisit the question of why you would want to use this AOT approach in the first place. Microsoft actually publishes a public dashboard with some performance benchmarks that can help illustrate some of the benefits and limitations of AOT. So if we look at these graphs, these compare a standard .NET deployment in yellow versus the AOT approach in orange. What's interesting is that some of these graphs are the same, while in others, AOT clearly comes out ahead, and in a couple scenarios, AOT actually fares worse. So for example, while the app is running, both approaches have very comparable performance in terms of how many requests per second they can handle. The .NET runtime is actually extremely efficient and performant once it's running, so this makes sense. However, as we scroll down, we can see that AOT clearly has a huge advantage with startup time and the associated time to first response. This is a really big deal in hosting environments or architectures that require cold starts, such as serverless functions or container environments or mass scaling. AOT also seems to win in terms of memory performance, though I'm honestly not really sure what's going on with this CPU graph. The last two we care about right now are application size and build time. While build time is an obvious one, we already saw how much faster our standard debug build completed versus the AOT publish command. AOT takes a lot longer, 
but that's probably not a huge deal since builds happen outside the context of your live app and will probably improve over time. I guess it could be a bit of an issue in performance-oriented CI-CD build pipelines, but I digress. Let's also take a closer look at the application size. This graph claims that the average AOT app is about 8 megabytes versus almost 90 megabytes for an app that uses the runtime and IL code. So what does this even mean? What app or assets is this referring to? Well, this is actually referencing what I mentioned earlier, which is the standalone deployment size for a .NET app. Even before AOT, we could still package up our entire app into a single executable that includes the runtime dependencies and targets a specific environment. However, that results in a pretty large file size. Let's see what this is talking about back in VS Code. So let's revisit the native folder in our publishing directory that contains our AOT compiled code. I have a VS Code file size extension installed that tells me the size of files in the editor along the bottom status bar. So when I click on this exe file in the native directory, at the bottom we can see that it's about 8 megabytes. You can also right click on the file and open that in the Windows Explorer to see that if you don't have the extension. Well, let's see what the equivalent would be for a traditional self-contained app that includes the .NET runtime, uses IL code and the JIT compiler, etc. To test that, we can adjust our CS proj settings and republish. Let's add an additional property in here called self-contained and set that to true, and make sure to close out that node as well. Let's also add another property called publish single file, which will package up all those dependencies into a single executable to match our native AOT experience. Let's also disable or comment out the publish AOT property. There are additional properties you can configure for this portable setup, but this is enough to demonstrate what we care about. So let's run our publish command again from the terminal. Give that a moment to finish, and a new folder will be generated under our WinX64 folder since that runtime was chosen by default. Sure enough, now we can see a new executable in the publish folder. However, when we click on this file, we can see that it's over 80 megabytes, or in other words, 10 times the size of the AOT version and roughly the size of what we saw on those graphs. This is a huge difference, especially when you consider container architectures or scalable instance scenarios. That means if we were to copy this app 10 times, we would save almost a gigabyte of data and overhead by using AOT for the same app, and we'd get the faster startup times and not have to install the .NET runtime. Hopefully you can see how all of these pieces start to come together to make AOT compilation a compelling solution in some scenarios. To wrap things up, I also want to mention that AOT support is still pretty limited in ASP.NET Core and .NET 8. There's currently a chart available in the Microsoft Docs that shows what's supported. Traditional ASP.NET Core application models like MVC and Razor Pages are actually not supported at all yet, though minimal APIs and most of their features are covered. Be aware that many libraries used day-to-day -day may also not be supported. AOT is a feature that will continue to grow and expand over the upcoming releases of .NET, so this is really just the beginning. So that about wraps it up for native AOT. Please click the like and subscribe buttons to support the channel and look for more content like this very soon.